Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. 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 A fresh cleansing today, God. A fresh cleansing today. A fresh cleansing today. A fresh cleansing today. Purify us again, God. Purify us again, God. Purify us again, God. Purify us again, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. Down in our souls, God. Down in our spirits, God. We want to be clean, God. Yes, God. We got to be clean, God. Got to be clean, God. Only you can do it for us, Only you can. Not go in every hidden spot. Every hidden spot. Purify us, God. Uncover it with your blood. Yes, God. Uncover it with your blood. You are my mother, yes, God. Uncover it with your blood. Uncover, God. Let your blood go down, God. In the guts of our spirits, God. Let it dig it out, God. Yes, God. Dig out every unclean thing. They got every foul spirit. Wash it out, In the name of Jesus. The Wash, it my mind, Wash, it Wash it from our minds, God. Wash it from the memories of our flesh, God. In the name of Jesus. Take it away, God. Yes, God. Take it out, God. Yes, God. We want to be clean. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Come on, tell him to wash you. Wash me, God. Come on, tell him to wash you. Wash us, God. Come on, tell him to wash you. Wash us, God. Come on, shout it out of your spirit. Come on, shout it out of your spirit. Glory to God. We gotta be Glory to your high name, Jesus. Glory to your high name, Jesus. Glory to your high name, Lord. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. Glory to your high name, Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood that washes. The blood that cleanses. The blood that sanctifies. Sanctify us again, God. Sanctify us from ourselves, God. Sanctify us from pride, God. Sanctify us, God. From thinking that we've already made it. Sanctify us, God. Sanctify us from pride. God, let your blood break us. Let your blood break us down. Let your blood destroy Destroy every idol in our spirit. Let your blood break it down. Let your blood cleanse it in the name of Jesus. God, give us the power to put on the armor, God. Give us the power, Lord, to put on the armor, God. God, let us put on the armor and seal every crack that the enemy has designed. God, seal every crack. Don't let him have re entrance in the name of Jesus. God, seal us from the front and the back. God, put the helmet on us. We gotta have you. We gotta have you. We gotta have you down in our souls. We gotta have you way down in our spirits. God, our belly gotta know you. Our spirits gotta know you. Our spirits gotta know you. Our spirits gotta know you. Our belly gotta know you. Our flesh gotta come under your command. Father, empower us now. Give us power from the inside out. Give us power from the inside out. Give us power from the inside out. Come on, somebody. Begin to give him a shout. Give us power from the inside out. Come on Zion, come on Zion, 
Come on, two more minutes. 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 Hold up, oh, she Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. I feel you getting tired. You got to press today. You got to press today. Your deliverance is in the press. Your healing is in the press. Your breakthrough is in the press. 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 Press out of your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oshalabaha. Oshalamasa. Oshalamasi. Oshalamasi. 
Get your Bibles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Mm. Glory to your name, God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Way down in our spirit, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 me come on help me saints Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabash. So love you today. Mm. Mm. Wonderful, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go with me to the book of Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Ka 
God, we bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, God. We are entering into an end time level of the Lord. <clears throat> we believe in God. We are in a realm now where the only person that can do what needs to be done is God. The only person that can do what needs to be done is God. In that state now where we can't pretend like we got it. Can't fake it. Because your circumstances ain't going to let you fake it. You can pretend to be in church, but you can't pretend to be all right. Your circumstances will tell you and is telling us that we need the God of our salvation. The Lord desires to reveal himself through us and to us. We must find out why we are experiencing a tangible anointing but not his real glory. His real glory brings about conviction the real glory of God and there was sin in the camp and God sent the man of God to deal with it he told him he said get up off of your face and go because there's something found unworthy in the camp and he went to Asa and he said, he didn't say, what have you done? He said, give God the glory. And give God the glory was translated in, tell us what you have done. When the real glory of God is revealed, the first thing that it comes after is everything that is in us. When God starts desiring to reveal his glory, he starts desiring to move the hindrance as to the reason why the glory can't be revealed. Because we were born, created, and then blood washed and changed for one purpose, and that is the glory of God being revealed through us. When Jesus went to Gethsemane to pray. The Bible said that he threw himself down on the ground three times and his prayer kept being let your son be glorified. God, if, it, if this is your will to remove this bitter cup, then do so. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He said, let your son now glorify you. He didn't mind going to the cross because he knew it would glorify the father. And that's why I don't understand why we become such babies when we go through stuff because it glorifies the father. Everything is not meant for us to come out but come through. That the Father be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You need a foothold in God to believe that. A whole lot of y'all couldn't praise God right there. Because you in prayer asking God to bring you out and you need to ask God what is your will because if I'm not coming out then I'm going through but if I'm going through then your glory is about to be revealed in my life for somebody else's purpose. There's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason why I'm in the situation that I'm in. It says here 
And all of it is not the working in the control of the devil because when it comes down to the believer, he does not control the believer. He does not control your destiny. What he does is what the Lord allows him to do. And the Bible said that when he spoke to Jesus and he came and he met him and he took him through the time of temptation, it said when, the, when Satan had completed his cycle, his cycle of aggravating Jesus, he then departed. Tell somebody it's a cycle. So the scripture tells us in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and I want us to begin uh, reading. It says in the third verse, I want to start there. I'm going to start in the first verse. But relative to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, still compressing. Relative to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren, not to allow your minds to be quickly unsettled or disturbed or kept excited or alarmed, whether it be by, the, by some pretended revelation of the Spirit or by word or by the letter alleged to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has already arrived and is here. Let no one deceive or beguile you in any way. For that day will not come except the apostasy comes first. That's the going away. Unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians have come. And the man of lawlessness sin is revealed. Who is the son of doom of perdition? This is where I want to go in the fourth verse. Who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and insolently against and over all that is called God? Or that is worshipped even to his actually taking his seat in the temple of God. My God. See that's why right there when the Bible said. Uh, said when, when, when in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Because Uzziah had become strong. He was wealthy. He was powerful. He was mighty. He was a lot of great things to the point that he began to exalt himself and allowed people to exalt him to the point that he overstepped his power and went into the temple and took on the office of the priest and began to light the incense on the altar of the Lord. He got beside himself. And so the Bible said, and the priest dealt with him. It says, taking his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming that he himself is God. Do you not recollect that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is, now you know what is restraining. Now you know what is restraining him from being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested, revealed in his own appointed time. What is God saying right there? Because when pride is is, is, is on the rampage and you, and you really think that it's something that, that, that you can do or I can do or any other famous preacher can do then the, the Lord cannot be revealed in that because he has a time for his revealing he has a time for his revelation and that time of the hour of the Lord cannot come until he see brokenness oh God I'm not going to get a lot of amens right there God can't be revealed until he see a kind of brokenness in us that we don't desire anybody but him. That he becomes my answer. Oh, come on somebody. I was watching, I was watching as, as, as Prophet Johnson was praying and I was noticing that, you know, some of you all were just kind of looking and, you know, and some of us have gotten to the place that we're spoiling the kingdom and we feel like, you know, when I get my breakthrough, I want so-and-so to lay hands on me. But this is a different day. And you will not see the hand of God in your life until you start seeking God for yourself. Your deliverance is in your mouth. Your healing is in your hands. Oh God. God, I wish I had somebody to go with me today. I wish I had somebody to go with me today. Because we, listen, we have become codependents on people. 
and if so and so pray for me I'll make it and if so and so can pray for me you know God will do it but there is times that the Lord calls an individual out he'll call someone to be anointed to pray for you because you are stuck in your belief come on somebody but when he's called you to prayer he's called you to a time of prayer he has not called you to this building for you to come in and want somebody to help you he called you so you can get in God's face and begin to cry out for you. Cry out for your family. Cry out for your mind. Cry out for your spirit. Tell the Lord, if you don't do it in my spirit, it will not be done. Somebody start telling the Lord, I need you. I said, somebody start telling the Lord, I need you. Come on, tell him you need him for real. Tell him you need him for real. Ooh, I shot up, oh shot. I said, tell him you need him. Tell him you need him. Tell him you need him. Prophet is about him. No, never pray for me. God, you can do it. I came for you to do it. I came for you to work it out. I came, God, because you called me to this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. When we reach for him, we'll see the glory. When we reach for him, we'll sense the power. When we reach for him, his authority will be revealed because you're trying to get it with your mind. But you can't comprehend this with your mind. It is a spiritual thing that cannot be comprehended until there is purification. Thank you, Jesus. He is not revealed to the hypocrite. He's not revealed to the hypocrite. You'll always struggle in knowing his authority and knowing his strength and knowing his power when there is no purification. The first thing we, we must understand about God, go to Psalms 102, 25 and 27. Psalms 102. Somebody get her a seat. Psalms 102. So we got to start from here because the Bible said that he that cometh to God, cometh to God, cometh to God, See, I know a lot of people that came in this building, but they didn't come to God. He that cometh to God. He that cometh to God must, must come believing that he is, not she is. Okay. I just wish Prophet Bible can pray for me. He that cometh to God must come believing that he is and that he is the rewarder see now now i know why we can't get nowhere now i know why some of us can't get nowhere because we think it's prophet is bynum's prayer he that cometh to god must come believing that he is and that he is a rewarder to those that not diligently wish that she would lay her hands but to those that diligently seek him See, I have to say that because our old prayer people, they already know who get the glory. Some of y'all new people that just came from TV, you got to know that God get the glory in here. God is the star in here. No power, no authority but him. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He's the one that breaks yokes. He's the one that breaks every fetter. He's the one that opens up the blinded eyes. He's the healer. He's the way maker. Glory to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. 
So when you talk about when you talk about him and you refer to him, you must understand this, that unless we are able to recognize him as been the God of Elohim, my God, you know, I've been on that, I've been reading that and reading that for the last couple of days and, and, and the Lord's been telling me, he said, he said, I'm in the place now. I am resting in the body of Christ now where my desire, my desire. So you have to understand something about the will and the desire of God. You can't make him do what he doesn't want to do. Why does prayer work? Prayer works because, prayer works because you find the will of the Father. See, a lot of times we don't get what we need because we in here praying what we want. I, Lord, I just want you to just work it out. And Lord, I just want you to fix it. What causes it to come to pass is when we find out what is the will of God and we seek him until he revealed to us what is his will. And when he revealed to us what is his will, we pray his will down in the earth realm. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. See, when it's a match, then the Lord does it because his word is on it. You can't make God heal somebody that the Lord has already deemed that their time is up. That's why when you get in prayer, you got to find out, God, what is your will about this? Woo. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Sometimes you can rebuke death all you want to. But when the Holy Ghost said it's time, it's just time. And ain't nobody disappointed but you. Because we pray fleshly prayers. Oh my God. And we pray those kind of prayers because we don't understand him to be the God of Elohim. He can do anything. He can create anything. He's the God of creation. And he doesn't just create. He sustains what he creates. Oh God, he has a timing in the window for all of it. Well, I don't know why my Aunt Ruth died. And I don't know why my cousin died. And I don't know why my brother died. For the same reason Jesus died. He didn't live forever. And I don't care how much Mary sobbed at the foot of the cross. He went on the glory. Because it was his time to go. He had completed his work. See, in order for God to do what we desire him to do, we got to see him. We got to see him as, as the God that creates. And see, preacher, if we don't get to that level, if the body of Christ don't get to that level, we're going to be a bunch of people that just sit and shout and jump in church and, and, and speak in tongues. Because let me tell you something, every last one of us in this place around the world, we have come to a place in our life that what we need must be created. Oh God, the things that we need God to do is not tangible to us. We need a creation. Oh God, I feel that right there. I feel that right there. I feel that right there. And I came to tell somebody today that the word of the Lord is saying that he wants to create it. Whatever is lost, you know what? God wants to create the same way he creates limbs. The same way he opens up the blinded eyes. Who am I talking to? He wants to recreate your family. He wants to recreate your mind. He wants to put creation into operation and give you a change of heart. And if you don't believe him for the power to create, you're going to be lost. What I need, he got to create it. Tell somebody it ain't here yet. Tell my what? I, I, I don't have it. It ain't in my family. What God told me he was going to do. Ain't nobody in my family never done it. What God told me I was going to have. I don't see. And, and listen, everybody else may not see it happening. But God said it will happen. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. That's why the Holy Ghost told me to call you. Because he said, I don't care what they say. He said it will happen. It will happen because I'm going to create it. I don't need to use what's existing. I don't need to use what you already got. As a matter of fact, what am I about to do? I'm going to make it brand new. Somebody said, Lord, I believe you. Now, don't say it if you don't mean it. I said, say, Lord, I believe you. Say, Lord, I believe you. Then bless him if you believe it. Lord, I believe you.
pasar Aleluya Aleluya Glory to your name Sit down let me finish this Creation, 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 creation. He gonna make it, Val. He gonna make it, Vereen. He gonna make it. He gonna make. It. People say, well, well, I, I, I just really want God to do. It. He gonna make it. I, I, I can't even get that in our minds today. He gonna, he gonna create it. He gonna make it. He gonna make it. It doesn't exist. Oh my God, the kind of ministry that God showed you that you gonna have, it doesn't exist. He going to make it. That's why you can't look at nobody else's and you can't and you can't copy what they're doing because because this is original. It's from the throne of God. It's from the heart of God. It's from the mind of God. And you keep messing up because you keep trying to find the pattern and find out what some other preacher is doing and what some other woman of God is doing and what God is trying to do to you is cause you to walk in the power of creativity. They said, where you get this from? God did it. How you get this? God did it. How you make this work? I can't even tell you how I made it work. All I know is God told me to step out on the left. And I went to the left and it just worked. Oh, I'm going to by Shonda. You're going to have many of people telling you, if I was you, I wouldn't go left. Brother so-and-so wouldn't left. And it didn't work for him. Sister so-and-so wouldn't left. But you know what? She don't know Elohim. She don't know Father in prayer. She don't know time spent with God. Y'all sit down, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I came to prophetically prophesy. I feel the prophetic in here. He's making it. I can't even get that clear in your mind. He's making it. He's making it. Your next level, he's making it. That's why you spending time in prayer because it is your intercession that is creating something. It's no different than it was when he stepped out. And he scooped up dust. I want you to hear that. No different when he stepped out and he scooped up dust. And, and he said, let us, let us make man in our own image. And he began to, you know, he, he spoke the word. And Dr. Johnson and, and the fowl and the fish and everything came into existence. When it came down to man, that was the first sign of intercession. It was, it, was, it was intercession because he spoke to the fish. He came into existence. He moved up on the spirit in the face of the deep. When he got ready to make man, he said, let us. Let us. And he physically scooped up the dust from the earth. Everything else he spoke to, it came into existence. He scooped it up. And he had to shape it and make it until it was what he needed it to be because... It had to be his total identity. God, I'm, I'm loving you. I'm, I'm loving you right now. I'm loving you right now. I'm loving you. Because somebody said, well, what is it? What is it taking so long? And God, I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been going through it. Why? Because it has to be his total identity. It has to look exactly like him. It has to think like him. It has to walk like him. It has to talk like him. Who am I talking to right there? Because in this thing, I'm going to give it dominion over the earth realm. Who am I talking to? I'm not talking about some mancy pansy something that God is about to put together. I'm talking about what God is about to do in your life in this next level. You're going to have authority over the enemy. You're going to be able to speak to demons. Who am I talking to? My God, demons are going to recognize your voice, your very presence. You ain't going to have to say Satan, the Lord rebuke you. They're going to know he rebuked. When you walk in the building, he's going to know he rebuked. When you walk in the building, demons going to start crying out. Like they did with Jesus. Why are you tormenting us? He never went looking for the devil. Y'all sit down. Let me read this. Let me read this. Let me read this. Somebody said, Lord, I believe you. I said, don't say it if you don't mean it. I said, say, Lord, I believe you. 
because you don't know every time you say that every time you say it every time you say it you speak in life in your spirit every time you say it let me help you with something every time you tell the Lord I believe you every time you say it out of your mouth you cancel in every lie of the devil you cancel in every lie every attack everything he's ever done everything he's ever said God I know what I see but I believe you oh. Oh. see that's why let me tell you something let me tell you something your feelings that's why your feelings can't be your faith that's why your feelings can't be your faith you can't trust what you feel to believe God oh my God because your feelings will play trick on you you can't trust that you, you have to know in whom you believe Bible didn't say feel what you believe it said know in whom you believe when I know him to be 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 Elohim when I know him to be when I know him to be Elohim when I know that and I don't care what I feel I know what I know and I go by what I know oh my he says he says here it says here, I want to give you a clear understanding. In Psalms 102 and 25, it says, At the beginning you existed and laid the foundations of the earth and heavens are the work of your hands. Listen to this. They shall perish, but you shall remain and endure. Yes, all of them shall wear out and become old like a garment. Oh, Jesus. Like clothing. You shall change them and they shall be changed and pass away. But you remain the same and your years shall have no end. Oh. See, that's the, that's, the, that's the point right there. That's the point right there that he's trying to, that he's trying to get us to. That's the point right there that he's trying to get us to because, because you know, with, with this right here, we, 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 we have that in our mind psychologically. And, you know, and I, and I, 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 I speak to my own self uh, in prayer, the things that God has given me to venture out and do. And I talk to my own self. And sometimes when you see, you see certain things just fading and you, go, you start fretting, and you say, mm, that, that passes, that's supposed to pass, that's supposed to wear out, it's supposed to fade away. But what I'm trying to do is give you an anchor in what never changes. Because if you get an anchor in what never changes, he can recreate that. He can, that, that, that ain't nothing. You can, you can give that away and get another one. It can look like you lost that. And while it's looking like you lost that, he's recreating something else. See, for the believer, we are constantly in the mold of replenishing. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me right there. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me right there. In other words, it's a trick of the eye for the world. What am I saying? When it looks like the believer is losing, really all things are working together for the good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. When it looks like we ain't going to make it and we by ourselves, no, I'll never leave you, no, forsake you. When it looks like we will and we don't understand, we can look to the hills from which come the help. Our help doesn't wait. It cometh from the Lord. Son, do you hear that? It comes. That's, a, that's, a, that's our privilege. That if we look, our help comes. If we get off the phone from trying to find out from, from people who are non-spiritual and non-prayer warriors and trying to help us explain to us what God is doing, if we just get off the phone and look, our help will come. Oh, y'all, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. If we come out the malls and get on our face before God and we look, our help would come. Because your, calm, your, your help doesn't come from man. It comes from God. It comes from God. So he says it. So he says it. Are y'all hearing God? Anything. Anything. He is a he is a he is a creator of anything he is yeah hagar said he is he is the god that is el rohi he is a god that sees me and i see him oh my god 
says, see, if you don't know this about God, if you don't know this about God, then you can't go to that, you can't go to the next level because really the church has gone as far as it can go with a, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm coming out. Turn around and spin three times and it's over. Mm-mm. 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 We can't go no further with that. Oh, come on here, somebody. You can't go no further with just crying in church and just saying, oh God, I just thank you, I praise you. You have to come to the place of, of the level of the creation of the Bible said that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you just can't speak something that you don't have power to create. The reason why God spoke it and it came into existence because the authority in him was to create it. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. It wasn't lip service. So we got the church for the lip service. Oh, I speak it and I decree it. But you don't have the power within to decree it. Oh, come on here, somebody. Come on here, somebody. I didn't hear nothing right there. I didn't hear nothing right there. That power comes from communicating with God. That power comes from spending time with God. When Jesus got ready to go to the cross, he didn't go to his cousin's house and have tea. He went to the garden and he prayed. Somebody said prayer. Somebody said prayer. Isaiah 40 and 28. Go there. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. We're walking through this today. We're walking through this today because I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. My God. Isaiah 40 and 28 and 29. It said, oh, hey, Shandar 28 said, have you not known? Do you have it? Do you have it? Say amen. amen. Say amen. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint. Ooh. Sister White, he don't freak out over our stuff. He does not faint. He don't get dizzy and overwhelmed at what he sees and what he hears. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me because I, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get you to, try, try, trying to get you to see that, uh, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when that he gets in me for real, he does not faint. You can be looking at disaster in the face, but something inside of you. Do I have anybody in here that ever been through something like that? Where something happened where you should be really freaking out and you come and everybody wonder why you come because they think you're having a breakdown. But you know what? Something that hits your spirit called the word of God and it causes you to walk in a level where you do not faint. shake he said don't you know that that happened yep do you know that this and this that, that? yep do you see this song so so but what you gonna do about it and everybody run around crazy and you just and they start saying something wrong with it y'all better pray for her cause but well, I ain't never seen I ain't never seen her this calm and I and I know because, because what's in me won't let me faint. It says, it says, have you not known that he does not faint or grow weary? And there is no searching, searching of his understanding. There is no searching of his understanding. Sister, when you know him, there's no searching of his understanding. You ain't got to keep saying, why, Lord, why? Why, Lord, why? Why? No, 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 no. There is no searching of his understanding. You know him this much that you can trust him when you can't trace him. You know him this much that he knows the way that I take him when he's tried me. I'm coming out as pure gold. You know him to this level that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil because thou art with me. You get to know him to the level that you don't have to search for his understanding. It ain't no way I got to understand 
Well, Lord, you're going to have to make me understand. No, you come to the point where you say, Lord, I don't even know what you're doing right there. But whatever it is, I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to praise you anyhow. See, let me tell you something. Real praise don't count until you get to that level. Because all this glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. When you get a new car, that ain't it. All that, when you get an extra $200 on your check, that ain't it. I'm going to tell you when it counts. When everything looks bleak and everything looks like the devil done won and everything looks like it's done washed up and you lift up your hands and start praising God. Because then the Lord said, I know you know me now. Hey! I know that ain't no fake praise because ain't no way in the world you can praise me like that in the midst of your situation unless you know me. sit down for a minute because because right there we could lose the church we can lose the church because all I need is 21 people in this place right now that's going through the fire that can say for the Lord you can trust me with a praise Come on, give it to him. Give it to him if you trust him. Give it to him if you know him. Give it to him if you believe him. Give it to him if you're going to wait on him. Because the Bible said that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength.
you ought to bless him. You ought to bless him. You ought to bless him. Who about shot? You ought to bless him. You ought to bless him. Because he's a God of a second chance. That's what I hear the Spirit say. Bless me. Because I'm a God of a second chance. I'm giving second chances today. I'm renewing your strength. I'm restoring your joy. Somebody praise me. I messed up, but I bless your name. I made a mistake, but I bless your name. I hear the Spirit saying, I'm passing out second chances. Hey, come on. I'm renewing your strength. I'm restoring your joy. Oh, new strength. No strength. No strength. No strength. No strength. He ba 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 Let me give you this. Let me tell you what's happening right now. Oh, Shaya, here's so Rabba who tell you about her. Who's Sana In the overflow room. All over this building. Let me tell you what he gave me today to give you. He said, Read Isaiah 40 to them and tell them, Isaiah 40 29 says, Dr. Johnson, he gives power to the faint and the weary and to him who has no might <laughs> y'all didn't get nothing he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might he increases strength Okay, some of y'all think I'm just reading the Bible. I'm prophesying that this is what is physically and mentally happening to you right now. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Father, just help me find somebody. Help me find somebody to receive this. Help me find, because I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not talking about next week, Dr. Johnson. I'm not talking about an as you go, he gonna do it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that level of the anointing. He said we have surpassed that level of the anointing. Where we are now is when he speaks it, he's doing it now. Okay, all I need is two people to receive it. All I need is two people to receive this. And, I, 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 he said, and to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply. sitting in this chair but you are multiplying oh I don't I don't I don't I, I can't hardly stand here to think about this I am standing in the middle of this floor and everything about me right now is multiplying
and if I keep on saying it, I'm gonna keep on getting bigger. No, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't even understand what I'm just saying. You don't, you don't even understand what God is saying. You don't even understand what God is saying. This ain't about you. This ain't about you. This ain't about you. You are multiplying according to his word. There's something about you now that is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. God is doing stuff that's got your name on it and you don't even know about it. I shut that Okay, let me give you an example. Sit down. Sit down, because I gotta take you to the scripture so you can understand that what I'm saying is true. And this ain't this ain't this ain't hype. This ain't hype. To him who have no might, he increases strength. David, all of his brothers, massive build and soldiers out there fighting a the giant. David out there worshiping. He just came to bring him lunch. He had no might. They tried to put armor on him that didn't fit him. But because he was a worshiper and he knew his God. God took five smooth stones and increased his strength. And what they couldn't do with might, he did with a stone. He brought a giant down. Oh no, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. I want you to get what God is saying. And while David was on the backside of the desert worshiping God, God had stripped the anointed off of Saul. And David had already been made king and he didn't even know it. So when I tell you that God is multiplying you and he's doing something that you don't know he's doing, you better open up your mouth and start praising God. teach you how to believe it I'm trying to teach you how to respond to his word forget about what you see forget about your limitations I said praise him because he is doing something with your name on it today he's doing it today something is going down today God I wish I had oh I, I, I won't take it back I feel it in my spirit Andre Today, something is going down. Something is going down. Something is happening. Something somewhere. Sit down so I can get through with this. You better come out here. You better come out here. You better come out here. You better come out here in the spirit. I command you to leave that bench. You better come on up in your spirit and receive this. Oh, come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody. Lord have mercy. I just want somebody to grab what I see that something is happening for me today. For me today. For me. For me today. For me. You can sit there if you want to. Something is being changed for me. Something is being altered for me. Something is moving in my favor. Something, hey, hey, shake it, hey, hey, hey. He working it out. He working it out. He working it out. Hey, they ain't gonna take it. I hear the Holy Ghost said, they not gonna take it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but he said they not gonna take it. God go open up another door. Another door just came open. Another door just came open.
Can I read to you what it said? Can I read to you what it said? 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. He says, fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror. And be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you in difficulties. Yes, I will help you. I can't get nobody. Let me, let me read this part to you. I will help you. Yes. Now I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. Because people say this to me all the time. Well, why she always holler and say yes? You look right there in the front of, I will help you. And it says, yes. I will help you. Then it says, yes. I will strengthen you. So when the Lord is hollering, say yes. He's saying, say, I want you to speak my language. That ain't just, that ain't just, yes, Lord, I will. That's yes, Lord, you will too. Somebody say yes. See, when you get purified out, and you start walking in obedience and you start shouting yes up it ain't yes i will it's yes lord i know you will yes lord i know you can oh. he said i will hold you up and retain you with my victories. Now, y'all don't know what that means. I, I, I talked to a woman yesterday, Johnson. A woman that's getting ready to do some work for my ministry. And I said, Bishop, I said, I said, how do you operate? And she said, she told me all of what she do and all of what she can do. And she said, but I operate with a retainer. I said, well, well uh, how much? She said, well, my retainer is three thousand dollars she said and the reason why i asked for a retainer is because when your money is involved it makes you more committed to go through with the process you know they saying nothing when you hire a lawyer he want a retainer because when your money is involved it makes you more committed to go through the process now the scripture just said that he shall retain me with victories which means he gonna put victories in my hand to retain me so i can be more committed to go through the process no come on no come on here somebody come on here somebody come on here somebody that's why you ain't gotta worry about no blessing you ain't gotta worry about no money you ain't gotta worry about Sit down, because I got something to tell you right now. This, 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 this. 
that's going to straighten the whole matter out. Tell somebody. Just lean around and tell somebody. I can't stop praying. I got a retainer. I got a retainer. Because when the devil should have wiped me out, God gave me the victory. Hey, I can't stop interceding. Because I got a retainer. Because when they thought I was through, they pressed me down on one side. God raised me up over here. I got to stay in prayer. I got to keep on coming. I got to get up in the morning. I got to get in this face. I got to return. Look at me. Take a look at me. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be standing here. But God. Somebody praise him for the victory. Help. Somebody praise him for the victory. Somebody let your mind go back to something that should have wiped you out, but you still here. Hey, 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 I'm still here, I'm still standing, I still got my points. somebody now this is a this is your prophecy this is the one that you write on the on a piece of paper and tape it to your dashboard 
This is the one that you put up in your cubicle. You take this one and write it in the inside of your Bible. Not on a piece of paper, but on one of them flaps that you know ain't coming out the Bible. He said right here, he said, when you get to prayer Tuesday, read this to the people. Let this be your last scripture. And behold, I am with you. Will keep watch over you with care. Take notice of you wherever you may go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done all of which I have told you. And that settles it. You better turn around and tell somebody, I don't have to feel God. I don't have to sense God. I got a word from God that he ain't leaving me until he's done. Oh, that he said that he was going to do for me. He ain't going away. I did not know it. 
But that ain't the part that got me. This is the part that get me right here. He was afraid and said, how to be feared and reverenced is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And here it is, Johnson. And this is the gateway to heaven. <laughs> you... I'm not talking about no building. I'm talking about the temple. And when you recognize that he's in this place and you didn't even know it, you know why the devil tried to keep you asleep? Because your spirit is the gateway to heaven.
let me tell you this and this is very important I was speaking to Archbishop Duncan he flew down him and Johnson and came to the property to consecrate the grounds and we sat at the table and we started talking this is very significant and I began to ask him some questions because the Lord wanted me to dig out some stuff and so we began to talk about every hour of the day the hours of the day being the watches and the watches of prayer and Sunday morning when I got back to the church and I began to minister the Lord revealed something to me he said we were talking and Bishop told me he said 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. it's four watches of the day from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the first watch from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. is the second watch from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. is the third watch from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. is the fourth watch of the day from 6 p.m. at night to 9 p.m. is the first watch of the night from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight is the second watch of the night from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. is the third watch of the night and that's why at midnight when Paul and Silas prayed they were in the realm of the third watch of the night from from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the fourth watch of the night and what the Lord revealed to me he said why there are supernatural mysteries and victories and no strain to get the victory in this prayer is because 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the last watch of the night but from 6 a.m. to 9 uh, p.m. is the first watch of the day so when the Lord called us to 5 a.m. prayer he called us to 5 a.m. prayer but we're not finished until 7 which means the Lord showed me that he has called us to the last watch of the night of the day and the first watch of the night which means we'll we, we're standing in the destiny of today and we control tomorrow in the same prayer meeting means everything that the devil did yesterday we canceled it and we also been given authority to speak into the future come on here somebody and praise it oh that sounds just like God because I remember in the Bible that it was day and night in the same place at the same time and he only gave that kind of victory that those that belong to him who am I talking to today that's why the devil don't want you to come in here he don't want you to get up at 5 a.m. because you're controlling. I don't think you heard what I say. Some of y'all be, how many people be on your way getting up to come to prayer around 3 o'clock? Oh my God. See, when you on your way to prayer, Oh, Jesus. When you're on your way to prayer, you are already all in, in, in the last watch of the night. That means you're going to close it. You're going to finish it. That means by the time you get here, you came to put an end to it. Whatever the devil did before you got here, you came to call it quits. You came to cancel it. You came to deny it access. You came to rebuke the foothold. Somebody give God praise. And then while you're still here, you came to declare victory. You came to speak to your future. You came to speak those things up. But be not as though they were. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody bless it. Somebody bless it. 
Lift your hands up all over this place. I got a few minutes. Where's my watch, Catherine? And the Lord spoke and said, I will not leave you. That's ringing in my spirit until I have done all that I told you that I was going to do. And when I woke out of my sleep, I was afraid because the Lord was in this place. And I did not know it. Because this place is the gateway to heaven. This place gives me access to the throne. You don't have a problem that prayer can't change. You don't have a situation that prayer can't alter. One thing about prayer, it'll fix it, or it'll fix you in it. It'll change the situation, or it'll change you in it. The interest is you. He's interested in the prayer warrior. He's interested in the intercessor. So whether he changes it or changes you, it will change. There's some things that the Lord changes and there's some things that he changes you into. When people start acting crazy, it don't even phase you no more. Because you're not in that grade anymore. You're not in the grade where it counts. It just don't matter. Because prayer has moved me to another place. And you're able to look at it and say, I'm not there no more. What used to affect me doesn't affect me anymore. That's why the enemy don't want us to pray. And he don't want us to pray through. Because the fervent, effectual prayers of a righteous man, it availeth much. It makes you the victor. Doesn't matter the outcome. It makes you the victor. Makes you the winner. Causes you to walk in an authority. Can you imagine? And you write this down. I'm going to give this to you one more time because this is where we're going. Give me that green notebook. This is where we're going right here. I was said I will stand up on my watch. I want you to write this down. Because son, Mark, can you can you can you imagine what would happen 
Dr. Johnson, can you imagine what would happen if the believers would make a commitment, Prophet Johnson, Prophet Jones too, that if it ain't nothing but 15 minutes, 10 minutes, to never be caught outside of a watch without praying? See, that's where I'm going. I've been at 5 a.m. prayer for more than eight years now. So when the Lord calls us to another level, he said, now it's not just the 5 a.m. It's possessing the watches so that the enemy has no foothold in any hour of the watch. Y'all ain't saying. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., he can't get in there because at 8.15, I prayed. I have to pray within the watch hour. Are you hearing this? Four watches of the day. Just put four in day. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 12 noon. 12 noon to 3 p.m. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now put four of night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to 12 midnight, 12 midnight to 3 a.m., and 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Let me show you something, Catherine, quickly. Let me show you something why I'm, why I'm giving you this. Let me show you this. See, there's a systematic spiritual science to this. And, it, and, 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 and if we follow it, we are guaranteed to be victors. Because Psalms 91 says, you, 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror of the night. First watch. Nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day. Y'all ain't saying that. Day watch. Nor of the pestilence that stalk in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprises and lays wait at noonday. So, 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 when the terror comes by night, 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., 9 p.m., 12 midnight 12 midnight 3 a.m. 3 a.m. 6 a.m. he cannot gain access because I got that covered and when the spirit of irritation comes spiritual pestilence to irritate me in the darkness I'm already up at 3 o'clock on my way to 5 a.m. prayer while it's still dark I got that covered and when death and see this is the mystery because we're always afraid of the night but let me tell you what the fear of the night is the fear of the night supposed to be more terrifying for you because it is the hour of spiritual darkness it is the hour where the enemy speaks lies and that's why we always afraid of the night and act like a fool during the day when, the, when it is the noonday hour that death lurks. See, some of y'all didn't, didn't, didn't quite understand what I just said. You didn't quite understand what I just said. Because in order for the enemy to control Johnson, what happens in the next day, he has to do it by noon. You don't understand. Because now we already into the PM after that. If you go, if you're gonna declare victory, if you're gonna bind the enemy, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. But when it gets to 12 noon, have you ever noticed that? When it gets to 12 noon, it turns to p.m. So if you don't do nothing else, you need to 
you need to bind him before 12 o'clock. Because he's already trying to think of an assignment that he can take the spirit of the enemy into for your tomorrow. Okay. Tell somebody, I will stand up on my watch. So we got to come to the point where we, where we walking down the street, we on the bus stop. And we done prayed from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we done prayed from from 6 p.m. to 9. But we got to get to the point where we look at our watch. And it's 10 minutes at 9. We say, oh, oh, let me pull this cup. Father God. Because I can't miss a watch. Because every segment of a watch that I miss speaking to the Father and binding the enemy, I give the enemy a foothold. Somebody said, that's where I'm headed. That's why I had him. Elohim, he is with me. And I did not know it. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing thing to know? That I don't have to feel him to know that he's there. I don't have to have goosebumps. I don't have to quicken. And some days I won't be able to shout in church. But my faith is not my feelings. My faith is in his word. Lay your hands on yourself and say, he's in this place and I didn't know it. He will never leave me until he has done all that he said he would do. Faith walkers are preparing to come. Thank you, Jesus. People are being healed right now. I feel healing in this place. People are being healed right now. You're sick in your body, claim your healing. I saw a lady walking around here in prayer earlier. And both of your feet are very swollen. I want you to come to me, woman. You had on brown. Kind of a heavy set lady. Wherever you are, come to me right now. Sit down, baby. Come to me, honey. Yes, that's you. You coming back there. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. people in this building that have a hip condition come right in this aisle right now there's someone in here that's even had surgery in this hip and it still has a snap in it wherever you are come to me right now who am I talking to who's the person there's somebody that's had surgery in this hip come down here come, down here. come all the way down here you have a hip problem Give me a chair. Jesus, come down here. Come to me. If you have a problem in your hip. How long have you had this problem? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. 
Lift your hands up. Is that you? Which side of your hip? Lift your hands up. Both of them. He's Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Bless the Lord in this place. I feel a surgery in a head or something, something to do with the nervous system in your head. If you're in this place, come right now. If you know somebody that's had a surgery in their head, you're in the overflow room. God wants to heal that person today. 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 Sit her in the chair. Sit her in the chair. Hurry, come to me. Come to me. Come. Come. What happened? Say that again. Please surge my head. Please surge my head. Three surgeries. I heard that in my spirit. That is a surgery in the head. Lift your hands up. And there's some things about it that they could not correct. Because if they had a dug in that spot, it would have been life threatening. And they had to leave it alone. And you have abnormal. Um, I don't know why I want to see twitchings and sometimes they're like nerve shocks where it's almost like a pin or a needle or something. I felt that. But God said today he's healing you. Somebody give God a praise. 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 Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Somebody give God a praise. Hey! Say! Oh, shut the devil up! Get it, baby! Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Every faculty of the building. Every nerve ending, every cell that is malfunctioning, every valve that is cutting off oxygen, I speak here back in the Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost.
Somebody better help her praise him. But the curse is broken. Ah, the curse is broken. Somebody give him a praise. strange voice coming from wherever and whomever. You're going to get your hair down. You're going to cut this baby's hair. Because God's got a ministry for you. Come! Somebody in this place just start praising God.
in this place right now. You got a smoking condition. Because it's a condition. God said, come right now. If you don't be ashamed, God will deliver you today. You got a smoking addiction. Come now. Come right now. Yourselves. These are people who have made a 